Welcome to Top Stories of the Week. I'm Al Nguli. Let's have a look at the headlines that kept the news space busy during the week. The 11 persons convicted in the Bilgis Bano case surrendered before the Godra jail authorities on Sunday night. They were released by the Gujarat government but was ordered to return to jail by the Supreme Court of India. They were accused of gang raping a pregnant Bilgis Bano along with members of her family besides killing as many as 14 members of her family including her three-year-old daughter. They were granted remission on August 15, 2022 by the Gujarat government after the Amit Charlet Union Home Ministry gave it approval. January 22nd marked the 25th death anniversary of Graham Stuart Staines, an Australian Christian missionary and his two minor sons. They were burned to death by members of a Hindu nationalist group Bajrang Dal in Orissa state. Staines was working as part of an evangelical missionary organization since 1965 caring for people who had leprosy and were looking after the tribal people in the area who lived in abject poverty. On January 22, 1999, Staines attended a camp which was an annual gathering for Christians in that area. He was traveling to Kendujar village with his sons then. They decided to take a break from the journey and decided to spend the night in Manorpur, sleeping in a vehicle due to the severe cold at the time. A mob of about 50 armed people attacked the vehicle while Staines and his sons were fast asleep. They set the vehicle on fire, trapping them inside and burning them to death. Staines and his sons had awakened and apparently tried to escape, but were prevented from doing so by the mob. Some Hindu groups alleged that Staines had lured or coerced Hindus into adopting the Christian faith. However, the Wat Commission found that although some tribals had been baptized at the camps, there was no evidence at all of forced conversions. Stain's widow Gladys also denied forced conversions ever happened. In 2003, Bajrang Dal activist Dara Singh was convicted of leading the murders and was sentenced to life in prison. On January 20th, Union Home Minister Amit Shah declared that the central government had decided on fencing the entire length of the India-Myanmar border. The centre has also said it was considering whether or not it would do away with the free movement regime between India and Myanmar. India and Myanmar share a largely unfenced approximately 1,643 kilometres border that outlines Manipur, Mizoram, Assam, Nagaland and Arunachal Pradesh. Shah said that the border with Myanmar is an open border. For this, the government has decided that the border would be secured and fenced like the Bangladesh border. Associated with this is India's free movement regime agreement with Myanmar. An Assam Rifles trooper deployed at the Indo-Myanmar border in South Manipur reportedly opened fire at his colleagues, injuring six of them and later shooting himself. According to updates from the Assam Rifle authorities, Assam Rifle authorities, all the injured soldiers were non-Manipuri people. They have been evacuated to a military hospital. The security force said the incident should not be associated with ongoing conflict in Manipur, given the fact that none of the injured people were from the state of Manipur. Trouble in the opposition. The India bloc suffered a huge setback on Wednesday as Trinamool Congress Supremo Mamata Benerjee said that her party declared that it will fight alone in Bengal. Benerjee said she had no discussions with the Congress party and, and that she had always said that in Bengal the TMC would fight alone. The TMC is a secular party and in Bengal it alone will defeat the BJP. That's what she said. She said to have given many proposals but they were apparently rejected from the beginning, or at least that's what she claims. From then, the party has decided to fight the elections in Bengal all alone. The chief minister also claims she had not been informed of Rahul Gandhi's yatra passing through Bengal, contrary to claims by the Congress that they had invited India bloc parties to join the yatra. However, she said the party will decide on what to do at the all-India level. 
they will do whatever they can to defeat the BJP. That's what she said. Again, after the TMC pulled out, Punjab Chief Minister and Aam Admi Party leader Bhagwan Mat say that his party will also fight the elections in Punjab alone. He said the party will contest in all 13 Lok Sabha seats in Punjab alone. An RTI applicant has alleged invalid reasons for deletion of voter's name in Changtungya of Mukokchung district. RTI activist ST Yapang Longkumar alleged that 402 voters were deleted from the Changtungya jurisdiction without any valid reason. The information was revealed following what is understood to be a right to information application by an activist. In this regard, the Mukokchung election office told the RTI activists to bring the list of deleted voters' names. That's what the statement said. If they are genuine voters but have their names deleted, they will be added back in the voters' list. To this, the activists are said to have replied that it's not a time to be collecting and bringing the deleted voters' name for addition. They said rather they will seek justice in the court. So the RTI activists said they will not bring the deleted voters' name for addition. Six coal mine workers were killed and four injured after a fire broke out at a coal mine they were working at in Ruchayan village under Pandari subdivision in Woka district on Thursday. According to reports, the incident took place after a fire broke out as a result of gas that was apparently released from the mine. All six deceased persons were reportedly from Sonapu district of Assam. Four injured workers were rushed to a hospital in Dimapur. The actual cause of the accident was uncertain at this time. The news was breaking. However, it was speculated that the accident may have been caused by the use of a rock wrecker which caused the fire. Now the report said it was an electrical short circuit. This, the council chairman of Ruchan village told Hornbill TV on Friday that the two owners of the coal mine were summoned by the police for inquiry. Their other two partners, who are said to be non-locals, are reportedly missing and attempts to get in touch with them have been futile so far. The coal mine is said to be co-owned by four persons, namely Moitang Tungoi, Zinja Momuji, Agjur Ali and Saiful Ali. A sure moto case has been registered at Pandari police station. That's what the update says. Further, the coal mine was illegal, an official from the Geology and Mining Department of Woka said on Friday. The official who suggested refusal to be identified told Hornbill TV that the mining operations were illegal. The official said the authorities had warned the owners several times, even in the past, against undertaking a mining work there. A report of the incident will be submitted to the government for action in this regard. That's what the geology and mining official said. Ahmadmi Party Chief and Delhi Chief Minister Arvin Gejwal has alleged that the Bharatiya Janata Party is conspiring to topple the party's government and that some of his party MLAs had been offered bribes to leave the party and break his government. Taking to the micro-blogging site X, Gejewal stated that recently the BJP contacted about seven MLAs from Delhi and said they would arrest Gejewal in a few days. After that, it will break the MLAs, he alleged. Talks have been held with 21 MLAs and after that the BJP will topple the government in Delhi. That's what the chief minister said. Although they claim that they have contacted 21 MLAs, he said, as per information, they have contacted only seven MLAs so far and all of them have refused. That's what he said. The Delhi chief minister said this means he is not being arrested to investigate any liquid scam, but they are conspiring to topple the AAP government in Delhi. Thank you for watching Hornbill TV. I'm Al Nguli. See you next time.